So today is Microdose episode. This is the first one we're doing, and we want to do a series of these for our listeners who really want to learn more about um, what we're doing in detail. Yeah, and I think, yeah, people who, we get messages all the time, and it is people who want to get started. Yeah, they don't even know where to start. That's literally one of the biggest questions, like, how do I get started? Yeah. Where do I start? And like, where do I get mushrooms? But that one, we'll get into that later. Right. So I think the important thing for this episode, it being our first microdose, is to how to know if you are even ready for this journey. Because I think some people think that they are. Yeah. And and they may not be. There are just a lot of things to consider that we want to go over um, today. Well, and... When I first started guiding people, I didn't really... Oh, you're sharing that publicly, huh? I feel like we've done it before. Mm. Somebody outed me once, and I was okay with it. Yeah, somebody outed us the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did on Instagram. It's okay. Okay. This is for our VIP listeners, so yes. Anyway. (laughs) So when I first started guiding people, I didn't really do this whole like sitting down with them, making sure they were ready. Ah. I just did it because they asked me to. How'd that go? Didn't go well, (laughs) which is when I started to learn that not everybody's ready for this. Right. And not everybody is willing to put in the work. And I had some people who were looking for a very quick fix. And I didn't realize it at the time, but afterwards it kind of dawned on me. So I think now I do meet with people and I make sure that they are doing the work. And I'm going to let the cat out of the bag because you guided me too. That experience went really, really well for me because I took everything that you said very seriously. So I think that it resulted in me having a better experience. Yeah. So, and I, and I knew that like, I wasn't just going to do this and that was okay. I did a mushroom journey. I'm good. Like I don't have to do any work. No, like it's a continuous thing. And, but I was ready for that. Well, and I think when I, when we did that too, I had already learned that lesson yeah, a few be. times, Yeah, you know, so I'm not afraid now to meet with someone and say, I don't think you're ready for this yet. Yeah. I think before I was like, I was still a little bit of a people pleaser. So I, would, I was just going to say that I would do it because they wanted it. Well, and you don't want that confrontation. No, you know, but also at the end of the day, like you could do a lot of damage. They yeah. could do a lot of damage if they're, if, if you're not ready for it, it could do more harm than good. Yes. And that's kind of what I want to talk about because I do know somebody who did this, was not ready, actually, you know, did it in a terrible setting um, at a bar (laughs) out of the country and um, accidentally took a heroic dose at a bar. First time. First time. And it has traumatized her um, because she was not ready. So. I feel like I know several people who have done that, who weren't ready for what it was about to show them. But I love what you said about um, doing more harm than good, because I think what these microdose episodes really are going to be about is harm reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Very educational. Yeah. With our own little Leah Christine spin to it. Yeah. Obviously. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) Because we're not the scientific ones. No. (laughs) <laughs> we just we just we dumb it dumb down. It down for we, you. <laughs> we dumb it down for you guys. Welcome to because we have to. Welcome to microdoses with dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Oh my god, love that. Okay, so today's episode is how to know if you're ready. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. I have these in steps, and the first step is that this cannot be your first line of defense. Right. So speaking from my experience. And I know you too. Um, we were doing a lot of things beforehand. You and I both knew that we grew up, you know, in traumatic childhoods. You and I did therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that we did. We did try medication. Yeah. Oh, both gosh, of us. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 
I did a lot of therapy. I did too. So not being your first line of defense, what we mean by that is making sure that you have um, other tools in your toolbox, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think I jumped around and I didn't mean to do that, but. You kind of did, but that's okay. But I think it's, (laughs) you know, I think sometimes I give talk therapy some flack uh, because sometimes I don't think that it really, really gets to the nitty gritty and the root of a lot of things. And sometimes I think that we subconsciously have these toxic habits and patterns that a therapist is not like that could take so much time and that therapist really getting to know you to really understand you to that level. Um, but I do think it's a good foundation. Yeah. Well, and how many people have we um, interviewed who are therapists, who are trauma informed, who weren't trauma informed before and kind of switched their practice to become trauma informed? And how many of them have said not all therapists are trauma informed? Right. And I think kind of all therapists have to be trauma informed. They should be. They should be. But I don't think they are. I think it should be imperative, though, because... You know, I, let's say, you know, Tony and I, we've, we've done couples therapy too, and I've done individual and let's say we're presenting something that we are struggling with every single time it's deeper than the situation in itself. Yes. I may be triggered because something that happened in my childhood, he's triggered by something that happened in his childhood. So yes, we may be arguing about a certain situation, Yeah, but it is always so much deeper than that it's not about that situation no and and I think that's something that I really learned with with mushrooms and really learning that that was the missing thing when I did go to therapy yeah for all that time you know we did couples therapy so many different times and we had probably four or five different therapists yeah over the last 17 years and it wasn't until our last one um Dr. Shaley shout out uh, our psychiatrist where we really dug because we had a therapist one time, you know, for some of you who don't know, my husband is a recovering alcoholic and we would fight about having date nights and him drinking and getting drunk and ruining the date night. And our therapist at that time was just like, well, why don't you guys try doing something without drinking? And I was like, well, but that's not the problem because we'll do that. And then the issues are still there. Right. Right. Or then he's mad. And I could tell that in those moments where he wasn't drinking and we were on a date, he didn't want to be there because he would rather be out drinking. Wow. So that happened a lot. And there were a lot of times I would concede and be like, do you want to go to the bar after this, after dinner? And we would go and meet up with his friends. So he would, I would like get a better version of him. Oh. Anyway, that therapist, like that fucking advice on like, that's not really the problem. Right. And then with Dr. Sheely, it was more like, well, why do you feel like you need to drink? It wasn't like, why don't you guys do something without drinking? It was, why do you need to drink? Yeah. Why do you have to drink to feel like you're having a good time? Right. And nobody had ever asked us that. So not all therapy is the same, but Mm. that's a whole topic in itself. So we can skip that part (laughs) yeah so the other thing that I have is um which we've already done but is therapy and support 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 is huge um you when you did your first journey you did not have support no and how much of a struggle was that for you I have opened up before about how it led me into another depressive episode like the worst yeah the worst depressive episode I've ever had like I'd never had suicidal ideations or thoughts before and this one I did yeah and it was that lack of support um because I I think about it now and it's wild like three years ago I didn't know anybody who was doing this right nobody talked about it It wasn't as prevalent in social media or the news or on Netflix as it was, as it is now. Right. And so that lack of support from like family and friends. um, I can't even imagine. Because I felt that and I'm, you're two years ahead of me and I have felt that, but I have Tony and I have, you know, you and then I have one or two 
friends who like really get it or even if they're not in this space they're really um supportive supportive empathetic um great at listening and even just they want to understand it yeah that's huge but i think we are beings and i don't think people really realize this but we are beings who really thrive having community yeah and so when you don't have that community especially when you're changing and growing because you know we hear so often and we both have you know experienced this too getting resistance from a lot of friends and family even though you know that this is the right path but they're just not on it yeah it's really hard Mm -hmm. it's really really hard um one of the other things about like the the lack of support is really for me personally like I started to feel like I was going crazy oh I'm sure because no one saw what I saw no one heard what I not that I was hearing shit but like I would hear things differently I would see things differently you see the world in a different way a completely brand new clean slate perspective and no one was seeing the way I saw yeah and I think that we are so conditioned and mushrooms really decondition you. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times you see things for what they are instead of how you want them to be. I think we a lot of times just go through the motions of day-to-day life and maybe we don't really realize how fucked up we are. Yeah. Our patterns are, our thought processes are, processes are our relationships, what's happening in the world. I mean, so much. But you know what's beautiful now? is that we have created this community and I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I don't think any different than I did three years ago, but like having other people right. who feel and think the same, I'm like, Oh, thank yeah. God I'm not fucking crazy. Yeah. And if I am, yeah. So is everyone else that is in my, <laughs> we circle. are not meant to be alone. <laughs> no. Yeah. We are not meant to be alone and be isolated. So having that community and having that support is really, really, really important going into these experiences. Talking about that, you know, I want to go into some of these um, clinical trials and studies that they have done in the past. Um, Some of these people, and we can talk about that too, like the clinical trials and what that looks like. Um, But because they are for the FDA, and because they are not really funded in the way that they should be, the ongoing support isn't really there. So a lot of times they've had these people come out of these experiences with like really great results. Mm -hmm. And then they go right back to their hometowns and right back to their abusive partners. And six months to a year later, they're right back in the same state of distress that they were in before they started those trials so I think they're starting to learn that now or not learn it but I feel like they're starting to maybe understand like that how imperative it is yes and providing more support longer after these trials happen so we always go back to this but I think of Eric and Courtney who um, own sanctuary uh, church here in Louisville but before they had this mushroom church they lived in Jamaica and they did retreats And they said that it was hard because they would have this amazing, you know, people would come and have this amazing experience with them. And then Mm -hmm. they would leave and they would not know anything about like the integration after. Right. Because they're thrown right back into the hustle and bustle of the world, the culture we live in, especially here in the U.S. Everything is so go, go, go. And so much stuff is toxic. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Next thing. Um and I kind of elaborate on this, is you need to have other tools in your toolbox. So, you know, Leah and I have found a psychiatrist who is well-versed in this space, and we continue to see him. Um, You and I do breath work. We journal. We Somatic healing. Somatic healing. um, We do embodiment circles. We do a lot of work on our own and like we are fully prepared to have other types of things in our toolbox to help us. Yes. I think that's a big one because, well, they're all big ones, but, um, I, I used to get stuck on the fact that like every six 
months to a year, I would feel like I needed to do another mushroom journey. And I'd be like, I can't believe, like, I feel like I'm reaching for this, but then realizing like, no, like in between journeys, I have all these other tools that I can use. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good way of looking so at it. So there yeah. is the breath work and there is meditation and journaling. And I think that all of those are imperative yeah. to integration and also to have at the ready. Yeah. And I think everything around us, again, it goes back to that conditioning. So it's like you're working against that, which that is constant work. Yeah. It's never ending. So do you have anything else to add to that? Uh, I want to talk about um, the fact that you mentioned that our psychiatrist is well-versed in psychedelics. Mm. Um, because how many times have we talked to people whose therapists don't get it? Well, didn't you have a therapist and you were educating her on psychedelics? Literally. So I was so, like, this isn't, I need someone who can educate me, who can right. help me integrate right. this. And I think a lot of therapists are learning yeah, and getting curious. Um, and they're seeing the research and, and all of the positivity around that. But again, I think if you're going to do this experience, you need to see somebody who is well versed in this and they can help you with intention and integration, integration and, you know, maybe even how to source and all All of those things. Mm -hmm. So we have um, talked about this before, but not only can they help with that. We've had someone before who was like, but I have a therapist and I'm like, that's great. Not saying you should leave your therapist, but we use Dr. Sheely as much as we use mushrooms. Here's the other thing it's I like, add. It's like not weekly, not monthly, but it's like if we need help with integration, yeah. we see him. Yeah. If we need help with setting an intention, we see him. It right. is not a, this is not a, this is our therapist that we see every week. Right. We but I them. think, but I think a lot of people like talk therapy because they feel like they can just go vent. Yeah. But it's not necessarily like, I'm sure it is like a release. Totally. Especially if you don't have anyone around you who's a safe person to yeah. vent to. Which I guess that ties into a later step, which is kind of self accountability. Yeah. So. We'll, go, we'll get there. <laughs> okay. The next thing I have is medication. Ooh. I'll let you start. Oh, shit. This is a question we get asked a lot. Yep. And um, we we borderline get angry <laughs> when, when people are like, I just came off my meds cold turkey. Don't do that. We are not condoning that anyone comes off their meds and uh, definitely not saying that if you decide you want to, you should come off cold turkey. I don't care what it is. I really don't. You should never do that. It's dangerous. It's more dangerous, like quitting something like a psychotropic drug, cold turkey, than it is to wean off. Yeah. Um, however, in this context, um, relating to maybe leading up to a journey or leading up to microdosing. Um, I think it's important to know what you're on and how it's going to affect microdosing in general. Um, a lot of SSRIs and SNRIs will not allow psilocybin to attach to your serotonin receptors because they are there already. Right. So it's like two drugs counteracting each other. Right. I hate even saying mushrooms are a drug, but um, yeah. So medication, just knowing what you're on and, and the risks involved, um, with taking a medication, um, and also doing psychedelics at all. Yeah. Uh, we can, I really want to go further into this in another episode. I know. Cause I was going to say, you know, I think that a lot of people think we're very, very anti, um, medication which I think it's overly used. It's definitely abused. I think that there are, it should maybe be the later lines of treatment, but I think that there are people who need it. They don't have the support. Yes. They don't have the tools in their toolbox. Yes. And for the time being, that is probably the best decision for them. Yeah. 
So that's another thing too. Like don't come off if, if you are not in a healthy, safe environment or you don't have tools in place to help with that. You know, yeah. one of the things I have people talk to me about coming off meds and, and I, this is what I want to get into when we go further into this. But like people are like, but I can't sleep if I'm, if I'm anxious. And I'm like, but have you tried ashwagandha at night? Have you tried L-theanine for your anxiety? Have you tried, there are so many other things to help support anxiety, to help support healthy sleep, to help support focus throughout the day. Um, and I think that it's important to know those things. Yeah. So when you are weaning off, you can have a support of supplements under you. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, for sure. And, and unfortunately most people don't know though, those no. things. So my almost it's not directed towards the people who are taking these medications. For me, my um, disagreement is directed at big pharma oh. and our healthcare system. Yes. It's not at the people who are using these substances because they're using it because they feel like that's well, what they have. What's that TikTok we watched today that was talking about how natural supplements were like taken out of healthcare yeah, it's in not the early taught. 1900s? But it used to be like, a very common thing. It for, used to be healthcare. It used to be part of healthcare, these natural supplements. So honestly, I encourage you or employ, implore you, to, is that a word? Implore yes. you to maybe use Google in this situation. What supplements that are natural can help support an anxious nervous system? especially if you're deciding to wean off of a medication, yeah. like you can't do it without having something underneath you to help support the things that you're going to be missing when you come off the meds. Which that goes right into our next point, which Ooh. is doing this can't come from a place of desperation. Yeah. So it's hard to explain because I think you and I were – there was some desperation in the sense where we did want to feel better. Yeah. But we were doing a lot of other things. And I think both you and I were really um, ready and willing to do whatever to do it took. Whatever it took. And Absolutely. I think a lot of people, you know, and this is where some self accountability has to come in. They're going, they want to get off medication to go right into a mushroom journey because they don't want to feel things. Yeah. And that's not how that works. And that's probably not a good place to, to start. Well, and doesn't that kind of go into the next thing? Maybe what's the next thing? Yeah, it does. So <laughs> <laughs> the next one is you have to really be willing to sit with your shit a little bit. So I was I just think, guessing at that, but absolutely. Get, you're so smart. I mean, we did just put this together right True. before. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was joking, but you are smart. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. No, I think it's, you know, people message us and they're like, you know, I'm on this and I hate taking my antidepressants and I want to do this mushroom journey. And I think, you know, for me, I took my anti-anxiety medicine because I wanted to numb those feelings. Right. Instead of realizing like, okay, I have anxiety for a reason. Where is this coming from? Yeah. I need to sit with it a little bit. Um, and so with mushrooms, I really had to learn to sit with a lot of uncomfortable feelings and not avoid them or push them off or, you know, press them down. Like I had to sit with it and process it. It's just interesting that we live in a world where you are not really allowed to express anger. And again, it has to be productive, right? Yeah. But like anger. Or sadness. Anger really. is a healthy emotion. Yeah. Sadness is a healthy emotion along with happiness and, you know, all of that. But it's just like we are so, again, conditioned to think that those feelings are bad. They're not normal. And they're not normal. But they are. Absolutely. They're a necessity. Because now. We are human beings. I'm should like. feel those things. The wild thing to me in that moment, I was like, that's how I knew I needed to come off meds is when I was watching a movie and didn't cry. Yeah. During a really, really traumatic scene. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is not, why is this scene not making me feel some type of way? Like, yeah, it's sad, but I'm not tearing up. I'm not like sad about it. Like, yeah. and that's when I literally knew that I'm, I was numbing. Yeah. Here's the other thing is I have a lot of my life been told I'm too extra, mm-hmm. too loud, too, too emotional, sensitive. too sensitive, just too much. Where now I'm like, oh my gosh, that is your superpower that I can feel things so deeply. Um, I can be very in tune with other people. People feel like I'm a safe space because for everyone else or for growing up, I felt like I was too much for everyone else. And I had to like dim it down and whatever. And now I'm like, you know what? I watch a movie and it's really sad and I cry and I yeah. feel it and I, or I see something bad happen and I feel that too. Obviously I have to manage it and that's work in itself, but it's a gift. Yeah. hundred so. percent. I think that it's, it's important to feel I, some, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it, but I think that that's what's like a lot of what's wrong with the world today yeah. is that people aren't feeling enough. You got to feel to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, which goes into our next point, which I feel like we've kind of already said it in a roundabout way, but this medicine, it is not a magic pill. No. It's not a magic pill at all. Um, So if you kind of have the mindset that you think that this medicine is going to cure you of all of the things and fix your life, it's not true. And I guess what I should say is you're the medicine. Yeah. You are your own medicine. They may be a catalyst and they may show you some things that you need to change and you need to, um, you have toxic patterns that you need to break. But at the end of the day, you are the one who has to do it Nobody and change it and do the work and hold yourself accountable. So there is no magic pill. No. No. Um, shit, I was going to say something about one of the first things that you said about that, just the not being a quick fix. Um, I, I guess I want to say with that, I think when we first started this podcast, a lot of people saw where we were and thought that mushrooms did that. How many times did somebody tell you, oh my God, you look so happy. You look at peace. You're glowing. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, you didn't, she, you didn't see the dark stuff. Thank you. Because that did not see the dark shit. That's exactly what I want to say. Like we didn't start this podcast coming out immediately yeah. of our first trips. Like we had integrated, we had gone through some fucking dark, dark, dark shit. Like I, you know, and we still are, we still are, but you've, Oh, this is where I was going with that. You've said it before where it's like, I still have anxiety. Yeah. I just, it's not debilitating anymore. And now I know when I'm having anxiety to sit with that and try to understand where and why it's there. And I think the difference now is before I was so disconnected with myself. Yeah. Being in fight or flight mode, I was always anxious. Yeah. And then it was like, I would get like an anxiety or a panic attack where now I am much more connected to myself. So when I feel like I'm starting to, you know, go off a little bit and get detached from myself, then I'm like, okay, do what do I need? Do I need another mushroom journey? Do I need, do I need to go see Dr. Sheely? Is this triggering something that happened in my childhood? Um, yes. hundred percent. Uh, it's like, um, who said this to us in an episode? I think it was maybe, um, Alexis, maybe, maybe, where she said the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. Yeah, but I want to, it was her. Okay. I want to use that a little bit because it's like, to me, the opposite of like anxiety isn't not having anxiety. It's connecting to yourself. To me, anxiety is a disconnect from your true self. Does that make sense? Same. Yeah. And it's like with depression, like Yes, there's sadness, but there's anger under that sadness. So much. There's so much anger that has not been addressed. And I don't think that's talked about enough. 
Jim Carrey, the way he explained depression oh, yeah. really, really resonates because he said it's like deep rest. It's your body's way of telling you it needs to take a deep rest from the mask that you've been putting on and playing this role for everyone around you. So I, I think that there is, we are not saying you do this and you will never have anxiety again or you will never have depression again. It's almost like you become friends with it. Yeah. Well, and it's like what we were talking about earlier before we started recording. How we really have it opposite so often. So, and what I mean by that is we have this mentality of like, doing easy things, yeah, which results in a harder life instead of doing the hard things and the hard work to have an easier life. Yeah. And I don't mean easy. Yeah. Because you're still doing the hard things. Yeah. And the things that are very challenging, but it's to have more peace within yourself. I was literally just about to say it's to have a more peaceful existence because I don't think the goal in life is to be happy. Happiness well, and, is like fleeting. I think that the goal is to have a peaceful existence. Yes. You can be happy and sad at the same time. Right. And life is hard. Yeah. But it's like choose your heart. Yeah. So, so and a lot of us don't want to do the hard things now. We want to put them off and then have the hard life. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, who? So somebody messaged us. On TikTok. Actually, they didn't message us. They co- commented on one of our TikTok videos. Ooh. And they said something in... Do you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. He said something like, I really, really want to do this. But I feel like if I do this, my life is going to change so much. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. Yeah. And my response to that was, well... Maybe it's not the right time because for this to work, you have to be willing to change and you have to be willing to lose people and lose a lot of people and things that you are attached to. Yes. Because to change, you got to change. And that means changing yourself. Um, It may be changing your relationships. It may be changing the things that are around you, changing your job. I was literally about to say changing your career, (laughs) Um, changing your friendships, romantic relationships, changing the way that you parent. Uh, Nothing changes if if nothing nothing changes. changes. So if you are unwilling to make changes or here's another thing, if you think the changes come from other people or things, you are absolutely wrong. Mm hmm. The change has to come from you. You cannot change other people. Yeah. You can't. So when you are maybe in a relationship with someone who is toxic and you come out of something like this, you are not going to change that person. What has to change is your relationship with that person. I think about our parents. Yeah. Most of our parents are, you know, come from the boomer generation. Yeah, they're very set in their ways. Um, A lot of this information with mental health and healing is new for them. It's new for all of us. Yeah, Um, I think we are more willing to see it and sit with it and change where they maybe aren't. And I'm not saying that for all, but I think it's it's um, it's very rare to see that in a lot of uh, older generations. And for me, I think uh, it was hard because I wanted to change my mother's mindset about things or I wanted her to see some of the things that have happened throughout my childhood that were toxic, that I wanted her to be more empathetic, more emotionally available. Um, So this goes into the next step, which is you have to be willing to um, grieve people that you're probably going to lose. And if you don't lose them, maybe that dynamic changes a little bit. Grieving that dynamic for sure. So I've had to really learn (laughs) to appreciate her for what she is. Um, You know, I have not let that relationship go, but uh, 
there are things that I, I, I struggle with, but I've learned with Dr. Sheely that, um, I have to give them to myself. I have to give, I'm not necessarily going to get it from my mom or my dad. I have to get it from me. Yeah. And so with that though, came some, some anger and some grief that like, well, why do I have to do this? Yes. But this person has like really, you know, amazing parents or an amazing mom or an amazing dad. And they're so supportive. And I don't get that. Why do I have to do everything on my own? Yeah. There was a lot of anger that came with that. There's still, you know, I struggle with that anger still because from where I am now and and what I've learned and done throughout this journey, um, when I have people close to me, family reach out and, and ask for help. I get angry. You get angry. Because I'm like, where were you when I needed help? Or, you know, I'm going to like tear up thinking about it. But like, of course I am. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like I get very angry that I had to do this alone without support. And now you're coming to me and you, it's not even like a, they don't, they want me to help them, but they don't even know what it means to have to do the work. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But it's, sure. it's like they want to learn how to be where I am because I don't think we've talked about this, but in the earlier episodes, I didn't have a relationship with my mom for like 10 years. And now she's like back in my life, but in a very different way. You put some boundaries on that. I 100% did. And I also let go of some resentment, resentment, but also expectations. Yeah. And I think maybe that's a good way to word it. It's, it's, they're still, um, we still have a place for them in our lives, yeah. but there are really some, maybe some strong. It's almost and like you kind of lose expectations a little bit. I don't, before I was so angry that she couldn't be a mother to me that I needed. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, I don't need you to be that anymore yeah. because I can do that myself. myself. But I'm not angry at you anymore. And so because of that, I'm, she is in my children's life. Mm-hmm. She's never going to be that mom that I needed. Right. And I'm okay with that. But, you know, you went through what you did. I went through what I did. Because of all of the shit that we've gone through. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a blessing because it wasn't because it was fucking traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> but... We are here now yeah, and we give that to our children, but we also give that to other people yeah, because we didn't get it ourselves. And so even with, you know, relatives who have reached out to you, they see you in that light. They, because they are, they haven't found that light yet. You are the light. Yeah. You just got to let it, you can't let them take it from you. I think that that's like the, but they see your life. There's a lot of anger there. There's yeah. a, the, even with both of us, like, why do we have to be the ones who have to do this work? And I think I see it different now. Because I was just going to say that the way that I see it where I am now in the very beginning, there was so much anger towards a lot of people in my life who were hurting me and having no accountability and no remorse. Now where I am, I feel extremely empowered and grateful that I'm the one doing the work because it means that I'm strong enough and capable enough. And I see them very differently because I'm like, they are strong enough. They just don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. You know how we always talked about how we are the black sheep of our family because we were the ones who spoke out against the abuse and the toxicity. Yeah. Yeah. And then you sent me that thing where it was like, we're the the rainbow rainbow sheep. sheep. Because it is. It's like, we're the ones who are, right? (laughs) Hello. (laughs) If you're watching us, we look, we're neon today. We're neon and rainbow. Neon and rainbow. (laughs) Um, But we are the ones who broke it. Mm -hmm. We are, we are the generational trauma breakers, which is. Cycle breakers. Crazy. So now. It feels incredibly empowering. Yeah. 
but we had to go through that dark, sure. like, I hate this. This is a lot of work. Why do I, why does it sit on me? And I think that that's a normal part of healing. You have to sit with those feelings. Right. I think a lot of people come out of this and right. start feeling this anger that they've maybe suppressed yeah. for a very long time. But I'm glad that we got to be the ones yeah. to break it because now we're here. Yeah. And we're helping other people. Yeah. Just by sharing our truth. Yeah. Um, so the second to last point I have is, or we have is integration. It's so important. Um, again, Leah and I have met with Dr. Sheely with, you know, journeys that we've done and kind of sat with him on what our experience was and then how we're going to take that experience and integrate it into our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to elaborate on that? Um, I think integration comes, I, I think that there's a lot of different ways to integrate. And I think a lot of it comes from talking to other people. Sometimes I, I learn through other people going through this journey yeah. about myself. How many times have we done that? Like sat and had a conversation and been like, <gasps> oh my God, I'm, I'm going through that right now. Yeah. Holy shit. And then you give a different perspective or not just you, like just a friend in general who's going through something and I can relate but their I, experience to mine and, and I learn something new from it. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of healing too is, um, I saw this TikTok, I mean, thing on CNN. I was, <laughs> <laughs> was talking about like how to know if you're healing and one of them was you can see yourself in a in everyone. You can see Ooh. a little bit of yourself in everyone. So no matter what the situation is, if I'm talking to somebody and they're going through something, I can probably see something in my life that relates to what they're going through. And I think too, that goes back to like finding your community because, you know, since our friendship has blossomed so much in this healing space, you and I have a lot of parallels. So many but I think it's because both you and I come from similar backgrounds and we're both doing the work to heal ourselves and so sometimes there are things out there that are tests or obstacles um but you and I seem to go through things and that's why it's so important to have those people to help you maybe see a different perspective or help you um work through it. I didn't say this. And and the one that we were talking about before, but like the willing to grieve and be angry. I think another thing is willing to, um, lose some people. And I know we talked about that a little bit, but, but, um, I had to cut some people out of my life. And that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in friendships because usually, you know, I don't know in your case, but in my case, anytime a friendship ended, it was because of something that happened that ended the friendship. And in these situations, nothing happened. It was just, I was starting to see things very differently. And I just started to realize that I was growing and they weren't. I was going to say you were evolving and they were Maybe in the friendship before you guys both. Oh, we related so much. Related, trauma bonded. And then there was a lot of um, stuck. Yeah. Like both parties in, in the friendships were stuck. Yeah. And when I became unstuck. And I just wanted to help them. Yeah. And but they didn't want to help themselves. And right. I think um, we should do an episode on that one time because that's one of the hardest things is like having to let go of those relationships and not just letting go of them, but how to let go. Oh, that's a good idea. I remember literally Googling one time, like how to break up with a friend when they didn't do anything wrong Mm -hmm. because I'd never had to do that before. Yeah. And it's, it's, I've lost some people and then some people, um, our friendship just dynamic changed. Yeah. And that's also another hard thing to explain to somebody where you don't necessarily want to cut them off and stop being friends with them. And especially people who you've grown up with or have had a very long friendship with. 
uh, they have these expectations of you that the friendship and relationship should be like what it always has been. (laughs) And I think it's okay for things to shift and things to change, but it's, it's, it's really hard to navigate that. Cause again, it's, it's not personal. We've just grown into different humans and that's okay. But we, you know, don't really maybe bond with like things to talk about or, you know, and so I just, it's one of those things where if I see him, it can be fine. Yeah. I just know we're maybe going to have some surface <laughs> conversations. Well, because I think they connect more to the old versions of us. Yeah. And they have a very hard time connecting to who we are now and where we are in our lives now. And how do you explain that to somebody without being confrontational and also without sounding like a martyr? Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult. Yeah. So, so we should definitely do an episode. I want to do that. an episode on that because okay. I think that comes up a lot in some of the people that it we does. guide. It too. does. Yes, for sure. All right. The last thing, educate yourself. Yes. Please. So, you know, before Leah and I did this, you know, and when Leah guided me, she sent me documentaries to watch, articles to read, podcasts to listen to. There's YouTube. There's Google. Um don't just go by what we say or what somebody else says. Do your own research. We get so many messages and we get so many comments on our social media where um, people, I think, take what we say, um, but they're missing a lot of the context. context to what we say. And I think it's really, 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 really important for you to do your own research. So you have an understanding, you know, if you do a journey and you do it with a guide, you have a little bit of an understanding of what appropriate dosage is, how to set an intention. Yes. You know, your guide should talk to you about all that stuff, but you also have to educate yourself and not rely on on somebody else. Accountability and responsibility. Yes. Like it's your responsibility. Um, God, I felt I sound so cheesy when I'm saying this, but like as as like a journeyer. Yeah. As yeah. someone who's about to go on this journey, it's your responsibility to look into what you're about to do. Right. And it's not on mm, this is so wild because how many times this just happened recently and again, I've had this happen several times to friends where they are taking an edible for the first time like a weed gummy, not knowing how much they're taking. And this just happened like last week. It happened to me. (laughs) And then they're like, oh, I'm never doing that again. Like, it's like you are blaming the edible for your bad experience, but you didn't have any, you didn't take any responsibility in the fact that you had no idea what you were doing, how much you were taking and the people that you were around when you did it. So it's like, you're lacking the accountability here. Well, it's like, again, and I'll, this is to me, I feel like the easiest thing to understand. You go rip 20 shots of alcohol and you get super sick. That's on you. So alcohol is super toxic just itself in general. Yeah. But it's the same thing in the sense that the first time I took an edible, well, I, I take it back the second time somebody just gave me a chocolate bar. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. I took it. I didn't feel anything. I didn't take enough. So he gave that bar to me. And the second time I took way more (laughs) and I was literally laying in bed and I'm like, Tony, I feel like I don't have arms and legs. And he's like, I swear to God, (laughs) they're there. Just shut the fuck up and go to sleep. And I was like, I swear to God, I do not have arms and legs. I'm so fucked up right now. I feel like everything around me has just gotten amputated. (laughs) (laughs) But that's on me. That's on you. That is on 100% on me. So it's like, you know, the story about somebody I know who goes to a bar in Thailand is drinking these mushroom drinks and has no knowledge about the mushrooms. That wasn't the mushrooms. That was you, boo. Yeah. That was you. You're doing you're doing drugs very irresponsibly. And not safely like that, that again, it causes, can cause more harm than good. That's why it's important to educate yourself. So this fucking full circle moment right now where you said I was sending you podcasts and now like we're that podcast for a lot of people. 
but Crazy. I was like, you know, I'm a rabbit hole researcher. I go down so many fucking rabbit holes. I literally had a Google Doc that I sent you that was like, here's all the shows that I watched and here's all the books that I read and yeah. here's all the websites and here's all the podcasts. Like, here you go. So I, I don't want to say I made it easy for you, but like. You kind of did. But it's I did not, it. you did it. And I think that that information, I'm not, it was available to me for free. All of it. I had to go down the rabbit holes to find it, but it's out there and there's research and there's documentaries for you to find. And it is your responsibility to know what you're about to get yourself yeah. into yeah. and to do the research. Well, and I used to be that person. I was somebody who hated on people who smoked weed, hated on them. And I was super judgmental. And again, it's what got ingrained into me since I was a fucking young child. But it's like what, you know, Dell said on our podcast. I was being super ignorant. Who am I to judge and be a hater on someone when I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about? Right. I know nothing about this substance except for what got fed to me. Right. So critically thinking is important. Yes, you know. And there's been this comment, too, where people are like, well, like, they are bad. That's, like, literally, like, what we got taught. It's a schedule and substance. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, I understand that you learned that in 1996, but. Things are different now. Things are different. And so, like, don't just take what your mom and dad told you when you were seven and actually, like, read about it now. And you may change your mind about something. Right. And it goes, I guess, too, into, like, less judging, more curiosity. Yes. I love that. Because like, who, am, who was I to judge? I should have, if I didn't understand it, I should have gotten more curious and questioned it a little bit better. But I think that's kind of the world that we live in now. Yeah. It's easy to judge. It's so, so easy. And I've, with this journey, have become a lot more curious and then, you know, really realized like, okay, so yes, I got taught that, but that wasn't right. What else is not right? Right. I feel like that's what, that's literally how I got here in the first place is like, I started smoking weed for anxiety and then I was like, hold up. And that's why if this works for this, what else is bad for us that isn't bad for us? That's why I think weed is a gateway drug, like yes. what you said, but not in the way. It's not the drug that, that's going to lead you to heroin. It's the drug that's going to open your mind a little bit and pique your curiosity yeah. because you're like, hold on, if this is helping me right what else, else is out there that they told me was so bad yeah because it's a big rabbit hole oh my god it's a big it? one you, and you've like i was never i'm not i'm still not really i'll do research but like you've gotten me into this space of like what the fuck is life everything is wrong <laughs> <laughs> everything we were taught is backwards everything we were taught was backwards no you may not go down the rabbit holes but i go down them for you you kind of do <laughs> so there you go <laughs> um so that's our last one do your research and we will in the next few episodes do one about what we did to do the research boom so we will help you go down those rabbit holes because one of the things i have realized in the past three years is not everybody is like me but that's your gift. And not everybody goes down the rabbit holes. I used to get really irritated when but people would ask me things when I'm like, you can Google it. And I'm like, you're right. Not everybody does what I do. And if everybody I was soak like up you, information yeah. that is, you know, I'm interested in. And yeah, I retain that information very well. If everyone did what you did, we wouldn't be here. So think of it like that. It, I don't think I realized not everybody did what I did. Yeah, which is really <laughs> Even, like my husband had to be like, Leah, not everyone goes down fucking rabbit holes. Big rabbit bad. holes scare a lot of people. And I'm like, don't fucking scare me. It's not that they scare me. I'm just kind of. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe fear isn't the right word. I Some just think is it's fear. It's, sure. I'm, but I'm, I'm not necessarily fearful. I'm just. I'm open to a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah. I and I fixate on things. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what it is for Which me. Which is interesting because that's like a ADHD thing. ADHD thing. 
Yeah, we've talked about that before. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I don't know if I am or not, but, you know. I definitely am, but I don't know. If, if it's working for me, then yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, that's how we're here, so. All right. <laughs> Which, by the way, this is an hour long. It's fine. We'll get better. <laughs> Hopefully. Oof. Maybe. If not, you know what? Like, if you guys are bored of us, you know, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh for our listeners our vip listeners we'll see we'll hear you we'll fuck. leah start over again we are sober we're sober swear to god um we will talk to you what is wrong with me i've been on vacation too long i've been on a trip too long we'll see you on the other side oh my god <laughs> bye uh, what the hell? We'll we'll talk. Um, we'll uh. What the fuck? <laughs> What's our tagline again? What is our podcast name? I can't remember. <laughs> talk to you later. Talk to you later. <laughs> See you on the flip side. <laughs> See you on the flip side. See you on the flippity flops.